Hello, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. It's a rainy, blustery afternoon in Portland, Oregon, so I figured this would be a good time to talk to you all about a subject that has been on my mind a considerable amount, and it's actually going to be the first of a two-part series. So today I wanna to address how permaculture approaches invasive species. The second video will be about how permaculture looks at the craft and hobby of beekeeping and whether permaculturists should be keeping honeybees, particularly in North America where they are an introduced species. But today let's just address what is an invasive species? How has traditional land management, agricultural, institutional methods of dealing with invasive species impacted us, impacted the landscape, and how would permaculture address the issue of invasive species? All right, so number one, what is an invasive species? Typically we think of an invasive species as an organism that has been introduced into a landscape where it is not native and it gets out of control. What is a weed? A weed is a plant growing where human beings don't want it. An invasive weed is what we think of as a weed that not only is growing where we don't want it, but we have lost the upper hand. Let's talk about some examples of invasive species um, that we have introduced unintentionally and intentionally. So some good examples of ones that were introduced intentionally are things like kudzu and Himalayan blackberries and uh, kiwis, um, autumn olive. Those are all edible food crops that humans have introduced on purpose and have escaped into the wild out of human cultivation and have um, dominated a landscape. Okay, but here's some that you may not have thought of as introduced species that um, have similar impacts. And maybe they aren't considered um, invasive by humans even if we look at them and acknowledge, yes, they're introduced, we still don't really wanna see them as invasive because the conveniences or benefits they bring to us still seem to outweigh their artificial dominance in the landscape. Number one, which people don't feel great about and don't like to talk about is the domestic cat, which is a hugely invasive species in North and South America in particular. Things like Honeybees, cattle, chickens, pigs, all kinds of livestock. We might not consider them invasive, even though if we look at it from the landscape's perspective, they are invasive. They have taken over huge swaths of the continent. Whole ecosystems have been incredibly altered for the cattle industry and for um, pig farms, right? But because they are still serving the purpose that humans would like, um, we are less likely to define them as invasive. Even though they outcompete other species the same way kudzu does. So let's look at the traditional approach to how we have viewed invasive species. Invasive species is actually not that old of a concept. If we look way back in the 1600s and 1700s in European uh, botanists and gardeners, they were excited to travel the world and collect species and bring them home and to learn about them and learn how to cultivate them and harness them. It really was only, I think about 50 years ago that the term invasive species was coined. And you'll notice that it typically is used by conservation organizations and government agencies when we are talking about how we approach invasive species, the conservation approach and the traditional agricultural approach has been um, antagonistic, right? It has been to employ chemical agents, which um, have unintended consequences for native species as well and for humans as well. It has been to see the role of humans as the dominator, the punisher, the eradicator of invasive species. And so we use 
antagonistic methods of combating them. Again, in particular, pesticides and herbicides. But how does permaculture see um, the issue of invasive species? Because ultimately conservationists and permaculturists have a shared goal, which is regenerating the earth, right? It's a very environmentalistic, a very ecological minded goal. But we come at it from different angles and with a different attitude and a different perspective. So in permaculture, a saying that's frequently used is the problem is the solution. What does that mean? Well, it means that we have an issue in our landscape that we have put there. And instead of viewing our relationship with it as antagonistic, we see a problem as um, a system out of balance. And we see our role as humans to bring the system back into balance so that all species are functioning in the way that is optimal, okay? Permaculture has 12 principles of design that guide how we interact with nature and each other. And we can use those 12 principles to shape the way we approach invasive species. So first, before I get into that, I would really like to address the issue of colonialism in conservation. Conservation work is... I don't want to I don't want to devalue it because I think it's really important to want to preserve wild spaces. But most spaces in the earth have are not that wild to begin with and particularly in North America, not wild to begin with. We have just killed or displaced the indigenous populations that used to interact with those uh, spaces. They weren't truly wild. They were managed by people for tens of thousands of years. And it's a very white European colonialist mindset to think these spaces were always wild and um, it is our job to conserve them as exactly as they look now for all time and make sure that people don't get their hands on them. People have had their hands on them for hundreds if not thousands of years. It's just that we killed them or drove them out of those spaces. So I find the issue of conservation somewhat problematic to begin with because it fails to recognize the human hand in the landscape just because we have um, violently eradicated the human hand in the landscape. It doesn't mean that place was always wild. Examples are things like um, systematic burning to reduce a closed canopy or preserve a grassland so that um, Hoofstock could continue to roam through it and indigenous populations could hunt them. So when we're talking about conserving a landscape, what are we talking about? And especially when we talk about introduced and invasive species, human beings have moved plants around and animals around on purpose for a very long time. Often in the hope that those species would come to dominate because they were useful for us. Okay, so now let's look at permaculture and invasive species. So we're talking about the problem is the solution. What do we wanna do about the invasive species that are here? How do we want to address them? How do we wanna deal with them if they are out competing native species? So this is where I'd like to talk about the designer Ben Falk. And if you look at his YouTube channel, um, F-A-L-K, is his last name. He doesn't post that often and his videos are um, somewhat like mine in that they're often off the cuff and often you know like from a GoPro and um, there's a lot of wind noise but he says a lot of good things. He is really into whole system design and I love that when he comes across invasive species in his videos he scoffs at the notion and he'll say invasive species like as if there were that if, as, if, as if that were a thing that actually existed and I really like that attitude because um, it forces you to stop and say, why has this species become dominant? And what are the benefits that it's bringing to the ecosystem? You know, when you take ecology and college, you talk about a niche that a, an organism fills in the landscape, right? What is the role of this plant or animal in the landscape? what open niche is there that it is coming in and filling or how is it out competing native wildlife with the same niche when you approach it from the 12 principles of permaculture 
The first one being observe and interact. And I've talked about before, observe, observe again, observe some more and then interact. You're forced to stop and you say something like, um, you know, you approach some Japanese knotweed in the landscape and you say, daggone, I really want to get rid of that before it takes over. That is invasive as I'll get out. Or, um, you know, look at this phyllostachys bamboo. It is totally taking over and I have a deep hatred of phyllostachys bamboo because of my own personal experience of trying to remove it from my yard. So don't get me wrong, I understand when people are really concerned about aggressive invasive species, but if we follow the permaculture principle of observe and interact, we have to stop and slow down and say, why is this species able to become dominant? And I think there's, there's two reasons that they typically do take over and get out of, out of control for humans. And the first one is that invasive species are filling a niche because we as humans or some climatic event or um, some other force has removed the species that used to fill that niche. Most of the time it's because the system is out of balance and those plants are pioneers, they're opportunistic, and they are able to take advantage of the hole in the ecosystem and plunk themselves in and proliferate. Now, again, a lot of the time they are able to do that because we as human beings have already obliterated the native species or weakened the native species that is there. And that brings me to my second reason. If there is currently a native species in the landscape that shares the same niche and they outcompete it. it is because we have thrown the system out of balance or sometimes a climatic event has thrown the system out of balance such that the native species is already weakened or somehow impaired and that creates a little crack a little opening for the invasive species that might have a slight edge to get its foot in the door so please think about when we look at invasive species, not only have we dumped them into the landscape, but we created circumstances under which they would thrive in the first place, right? Whether it be broken and disjointed habitat or, um, you know, application of insecticides and pesticides that have damaged wildlife, whether it be the fact that we have hunted to extinction the apex predators and large hoof stock that created balance in the landscape. Typically invasive species have a stronghold because of us. So permaculture says, what can we do when we see an invasive species taking over that is sending a message to us? Much like when you have weeds in your garden and you look at them, instead of being like, oh, dang, I have dandelions. Oh, I have doc. Say, why are these able to take over here. Why are they doing so well? And look at what the plant is communicating to you. And change your design and your practices to put the system back into balance. So when we look at a lot of weeds that take over in our garden, it's often because we have nutrient deficiencies. And so the tough pioneer species that don't need those nutrients or are able to fix them for themselves are able to get the upper hand. So they're communicating to us, your soil is deficient in potassium or nitrogen. So just think about that. When you look at the permaculture approach, unfortunately, permaculture says slow, small solutions. So there is no rapid fire fix for invasive species. But let's start by reframing the concept of invasive species to begin with and look at them through the permaculture lens of the problem is the solution. What is this species trying to communicate to us? And how can we take what it is saying and change our landscape to put it back into balance so that this one species is no longer dominant? We may also find that the invasive species, once we begin um, doing a good job of managing our landscape on its own will fall into the background, right? It's very much like how sea buckthorn is seen as invasive in a lot of places. It does super well in very sunny, very windy, very salty, very sandy, a 
obliterated poor landscapes. But what you find is when you grow sea buckthorn and it shades that sandy poor soil and it drops its leaves and it builds up biomass, you see other plants growing underneath it. And eventually they get tall. And do you know what a lot of those pioneer species and invasive species can't handle? Shade. So as soon as it has dropped enough leaves and created enough biomass to create a suitable environment for other species, you find those other species grow up and shade the sea buckthorn and the sea buckthorn dies away. So a lot of invasive species, if we look at a longer ecological scale, are carrying out the process of succession. They are the first step in the process of succession and ecological regeneration. So they're not always a bad thing, although if we look at a really short human time scale, they may feel overwhelming. So those are just some of my thoughts on how permaculture can approach invasive species and how we can continue to embody and live out the permaculture principles and see everything as a resource. Everything is trying to teach us something. Everything can communicate or provide something to us as gardeners, as conservationists, as human beings to bring our damaged system that humanity has thrown out of balance back into balance. So I encourage you to take that approach with invasive species. I'm going to try and take it as well for the ones that I really don't like to see that way, like um, Phyllostachys bamboo, like Himalayan blackberries. I don't have to keep them around in my landscape and I don't have to let them take over, but for the ones that already are invasive, let's use them as a teaching experience. Let's not have a hair trigger on using chemical agents to try to control them because that usually fails and it usually harms other native wildlife. So let's take the permaculture approach and be respectful of the indigenous land management that has gone on for a long, long time. Look at what we really mean when we're thinking about ecological balance and see how we can mitigate the extractive behavior of humans in the past and bring our systems back into balance and therefore create abundance for people and the environment. So I hope you'll tune back into my next video, which will probably be coming out next week, um, where I talk about how we want to view honeybees and what is the role of beekeeping in permaculture. Thank you for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I'll be back soon.